How you going, people? So I and it, so the video won't be quite so long. I'm going to do a complete put together, reassemble of a 1911. So this is a Taurus that I haven't cleaned in a while. Took it apart. It's broken down to every little piece that you can break down. There's nothing else on here that you can take off. I mean, I guess I could take my sights off, or I could take these these screws off. Other than that, everything is broken down, and I'm going to put it together. So I I put them in. So the uh, slide, there are your parts for the slide, right over there. And here are your parts for the frame. Obviously the frame has a few more parts. Uh, so um, let's uh, do our slide first, and I'll try to zoom in over there and see if we can put together the slide for you. So uh, everything's already been oiled, wiped down, ready to go. It's ready to go back together. I'm just going to put a little oil on my hands and gloves here because now when I'm handling it, I got a little oil on me. So uh, let's first get the uh, extractor back in here. It has to be lined up. When you put the extractor in, um, it's always nice to the, re the re firing pin retainer, little cap right there. Test that out and make sure it goes in and then you know that's correct. If that'll go in, you know this is correct. And then I take that back out, put my firing pin and a spring. One side is bigger, the other side should fit tighter. This side doesn't fit. I probably need a new spring. Both these fit the same. One should fit tighter. This side's a little tighter, so I'm going to load it this way. So then we're going to put that in there, like so. And try to keep this in here. I've got to hold this down without messing up my extractor while I slide this in. And then the firing pin will snap in. And I know that's probably this firing pin holds in the extractor. And that's pretty much all the disassembly to this other than putting the barrel back in, the barrel bushing, and then the spring and extractor. Um, remember the open end always goes out for this cap. Where's my cap? Oh, that little cap was on the wrong spot. He snuck over there. He's supposed to be over here. So uh, this will be the last piece I put in, so I'll just slide this through here, and I'm going to put it together like you would a regular 1911. However, this 19, that little blue thing is just kind of a cushion. You don't need it. Uh, some of mine have it, some don't. Probably ought to take them off. But uh, So because this is here, this is a screw-in cap. So I can't finish putting this in until I put it in a rifle. Um, no, actually, I can. Sorry about that. I can't put that in. So we're going to pull this back out. We're going to go ahead and lock this piece in here. Like it's supposed to be locked. Put the spring in here. And then as I lock this in, like a regular spring, without letting it bounce out and take off. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hate when that happens. So I need to keep this spring bent and keep this down where it's supposed to. Oh, man, it keeps wanting to pop out on me. I've oiled it too good. So I need to keep that there. And now I'm going to put this through here and hopefully get that twisted in there because it's a screw in. And once it's screwed in, it won't, it won't pop back out. I meant to say before I started, I'm going to get through this process without dropping something. And I forgot to say it. Uh, it's a good thing I didn't. I probably knew. So I spun it so much that it's tight, this is spinning. I have to make sure and get that right down to the right side. Now it's right. And now my slide is put together, or my um, 
Yeah, my slide. So that's done. So now we're going to get to the frame part. Let me move my little camera so we can get that. I need to zoom out probably a little bit. I kind of want everybody to see. So uh, on this, there's a lot of ways to go. The trigger has to go in pretty close to early because I have to put my magazine release in. And my magazine release is taken apart because the magazine release is three little pieces. It's this part, it's the spring, and then it's the little holder. And then there's a little screw right there and I need to push that in and spin it so it'll lock. Sometimes people take these apart and they don't take this out and clean it. So all that did was lock that in place. And then when I put it in the gun, I have to twist this back. So uh, when I put it in, you're going to see me turn clockwise and it will snap into place and hold it in there. Uh, actually, I'm going to do that now because my, my uh, trigger's already in there. So make sure your trigger's all the way forward. We're going to slide that through. I'm going to get it back in the screw and get ready. Now, when I'm screwing this in, I'm moving this up and down. You see this moving up and down? Because I have to find a sweet spot. Some of them are way out here. Some of them are way in. You press this a little much. So I'm just kind of slightly trying to spin it until it hits the sweet spot and I can keep spinning it. And there it is. And it popped in. And then once it pops in, it's good to go. All righty. So now that I have that in there, um, I can, uh, I'm going to need to put my main housing spring in here in a minute. So we'll put that together. This is a four piece item. There's this, there's this pointed end that goes down first, and then the spring fits on it. So that goes in. And then you have this piece that your hammer is going to set in and that's what sets it in that right in there so make sure and clean that out so this goes in here and then there's a little bitty pin here with one flat side and the other and this is a pain to get in um, I have another way of doing it but um, I don't know if you guys can see it so I'm gonna try it this way what I'm doing is I'm ready to push down and then I'm going to push that in after I get it way down. Ready? And hopefully I don't let it go. Son of a bitch! So what happened is the pin was in there a little bit and it bounced off. And that is the smallest piece on this freaking frame. And now I'm screwed. And I have to go look because I don't see it. So I'll be back after some cussing. <laughs> Not too bad. Shit. Maybe five minutes. I found it. Look at this little sucker. Hopefully I don't drop it again. You gotta be kidding me. The smallest piece I could drop. And I found it. With my crappy eyes. So because it was on the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of drop of oil in there. So what I'm trying to do is I just want to have this setting in here ready to push in, but it can't be too far that this hits it. What happens on this is I push this down all the way. This pin goes through and it ends up on top of this like so. And it holds the spring in. So I have to have it out just enough to where I go past it. And then I can slide this over. Okay? Uh, not the easiest task. That is actually the first time that it's ever flown off like that. And there we have it. I pushed it in and I pushed that in. And you can see it's flat on this side and it barely sticks out on that side. And it's holding, um, I don't know if that's coming out, let me get a light on here. It's holding that little pin, you can see it holding um, that thing down. Hopefully. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right. So, we have that. 
So that's going to need to be ready to go in there. That's why I wanted to put that back together. Okay? We're not going to put that in just yet. So I'm going to move these grips out of the way. I need to clean these grips real quick. I didn't want the wax. I put a little wood paste wax on my grips. And uh, it kind of helps so the oils don't soak in and absorb if you get a little oil. So if you take your grips off and they're wood, putting a little wax on them. And if you only want to wax this side, that's okay too. Wax prevents rust on metal anyway. So if it doesn't all come off and it goes against the metal, it's not going to hurt it. But it does make them kind of shine up kind of nice. And um, you can't put a whole bunch in the ridges or you'll never get it out. That's why I use this fiber cloth. It kind of gets in those rivets, rivets pretty good and allows it to... Uh... So that's what the wax looks like after it comes off and what it looks like before it comes off. So uh, I usually don't let my wax dry that long. I give it about a minute. And then I started talking and forgot about it. Um, the longer it dries, the more likely you're going to get that paste and flaking. If you get a little bit in here, a little toothbrush will, will take that out of the area. Alrighty. So now we have those grips done. I'm going to move them out of the way because we don't need them yet. The grip screws right here are going to be the last things kind of done. Those can be out of the way. Here's my sear and my uh, disconnect, my three pins. This little piece right here you won't have unless you have a Series 80. This is a spacer. Uh, if, if I didn't have that, I would have two little pieces that goes here, and I would have a couple pieces on my frame. You'll notice there's a hole in the frame that there's nothing in. See that little hole right there? That's where I pulled out that plunger, and um, I don't remember sticking a Q-tip down there. Oh, I didn't. Look at that. <laughs> when I was thinking, I go, damn, I, I, when you see a hole, stick something in it. I forgot to stick something in that. So let me uh, get a little coat of oil on there. And uh, we're good to go. So there would be a spring and a plunger in here if it was a Series 80, which it is, if I had that extra drop safety on it. You take that out. And then you take two pieces out of here, and I have videos on both this. And then you put this little spacer in here. Now, this little spacer is going to line up with these two holes right there, and it's going to fit inside this frame right here. But first, I have to put my sear in, and I did a video just on this piece. So let me get my, my sear and my disconnect in right here. Um, you'll remember how, how to put this in once you take it out. Flat side always goes against the trigger. And if you get that right, then this little piece just kind of sits right in there like it's supposed to, like a little glove. And then the pin goes right through here. So now I have to drop this in here. And now worry about getting this little pin through here. And sometimes it's easier if you have something on the other side that's smaller. And this will line up a little easier. And then you put your pin and you push it through. Uh, I wouldn't normally use this because I don't want to bend this, but I know I'm not putting a whole bunch of pressure on here. So I'm going to hopefully allow these to line up. If you can see what I'm working on here. I think I've almost got it. It's a little crooked. Okay, so my pin's in there and my sear should not fall out. My sear and my disconnect. But, I have to get this little piece in here. And one of those pins that I just put in goes over this. So what I do is I just push this out just enough to slide this in. So you probably won't be able to see a lot of this. But I'm going to push this out just enough. Not enough to disconnect them all, so I put it up that much and I hold pressure on it so these don't fall out. And then I have to slide this sucker in there, which isn't as easy as it sounds, but as long as I can get it to lay down and then get my pin in there. Oh, shit, went too far.
So if I can get the other pin in there first, that might help me know I, I got it in the right spot. All right, so now the big pin's in. I'm still working on the little pin. And now I got the little pin in. Okay, and once the little pin's in, it's all secure. So I'll pop that big pin back out. And then put in my hammer. And the big pin will just line right up with the hammer and the other pin. So all the internals are good there. I usually want to flip this back when I put my spring in. When you put your spring in, you have to go under. A lot of people will put that little slot because this little piece right here fits in this little slot right here. And they'll put it like this and they'll try to go down and it doesn't fit. So go in first and then drop it in that little piece right there. And then you know it's right. And then I'm going to put that main housing spring that I had put in there. I'm going to slide that and that holds your main spring in. You can't put it in too high, otherwise this can't get in there. So I just put it in, I slide it out enough for this little piece to go where it's supposed to go. And now I have to get my grip release, grip safety. Now that that's in there, always want your hammer fully forward so you have your grip safety pull the trigger and this will allow you to put your hammer all the way forward. That means there's less tension spring on this. When I did that, my little piece popped out. Now that that's in there, I'll put in my main housing uh, retainer pin thingy. Once that in there, I usually just give it a bang to flatten it out with a rubber mallet. It's flat. Now that's in there. Now I put in my safety to hold in this. Remember, the safety can't go in unless the hammer is cocked. So it's uncocked to get that in. Now I have to cock it. It's cocked. A lot of times, if I'm new, I'll make sure this works. And I'll squeeze the trigger, make sure it releases before I get it all put back together over time. And I said, oh, shit, it was wrong. I must have messed something up. So it's correct. Now I have to get my two little... Uh, this is a double-sided safety. These are kind of a pain in the butt to get in. Before I put that in, I need this little spring right here for my safety and which holds in my slide retainer. And that is a three-piece little kit right here. You have a long and a big end. Normally, it doesn't come apart this easy. The spring is just kind of old. And then this little piece goes here. And those are your three pieces. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. The little end goes in first then the spring, and then the long end. So the little piece came out here, the big end's here, and the spring's in the middle. I don't remember if I put a um, a, a, a thing through there, because this, this tube is very neglected. So I wanted to get a tip through here. So this might have been... I must have did it, because it's pretty clean. Yeah, it's pretty clean. All right, so instead of putting them in together, I'm just going to put them in simple. The little one goes in first, then the spring, and then the big end. And all three are in. Now, I can put my safety. Remember, it has to be cocked. This You can't put your gun on safety. A 1911 unless it's cocked. It won't go on safety. In order to pull this out, you have to move this in between safe and fire. And since you can't go to safety unless it's cocked, in order to take it out or put it in, your gun has to be cocked. Okay? So we are going to put this pin in there. Here's another problem that easily happens right here. That little spring is putting tension and you can't get by it. So what I do is I normally, when I'm pushing, is I just move this and I push this forward and then that clears the way when I'm pushing. So I'm going to be pushing in and I'm going to move this out of the way.
and now it moved in and shut and a spring right there is good. I can go in or out. I know this is working. Now I have to get the other side in and there's this little bitty gap there that has to go in this little gap. So these two have to be in the same position when this goes in in order for them to connect. Which sometimes can be a pain and sometimes not. So I just move it around while I'm pushing and when I hopefully I find a sweet spot it'll pop in. And it popped in. So now they're together. Okay? Um, so now this is done except for the grips. So I'll put my slide on. Put a little drop of oil on here. I already oiled this thing up and it's been sitting with a whole bunch of oil on it. Remember this pin is going to go through this hole right here once I get it in. So I'm looking for this little piece and it's got to go through this hole right here. So as I slide this in, I'm looking to line these two up so that pin will go in. So you can't see it, but when you see me looking, that's what I'm looking for. And there it is. It's kind of lined up. So to make sure it's lined up, I'm going to try to get that. It won't go in. So it's not lined up real well. Sometimes I'll stick something else in there and just move it around to make sure it's lined up nice. I see a little bit where it's, it's hanging. Oh, shit. All right. So now that's in there. And then I usually test it to make sure it works. Man, that's smooth. Make sure the trigger fires. Hold the trigger back. Listen for the trigger reset. There's the trigger reset. And it fires again. Gun's working properly. Uh, now I have to get this piece in here without getting an idiot scratch. Like, people want to push up instead of this. Now, it makes it easier when there's no spring tension. So what I'm going to do, just for you guys to see, is I'm going to release... I don't know if I can release spring tension on this. Oh, no. I can't. Sorry, I can't show you. So I have to do it with the spring tension. So basically, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to hold this back and line this little mark right up there. And then I'm going to come straight down and push straight down. And not get your glove caught. And then you push it in. After it's lined up. And you're good to go. All I got to do is put the grips on. And that is a complete reassemble of a 1911 and I don't think you can get much more down from that uh, I think I did I put oil on these but I'm not sure if I got a little oil in each little these are um, hex screws and I don't want them rusting so I want to get a little uh, and I think I did this, but if I didn't, uh, it doesn't hurt to do it again. Okay, a couple screws in here. Reverse, I'll hear a click. There's my click. Very, very light on these grips. A lot of people, I think, put their screws on too tight on a grip. Uh, it's not like we're out there running around. If they start coming loose, then maybe you want to tighten them. But putting these on tight is really unnecessary. Um, a good little cinch down, a little torque, and if you're cleaning your gun regularly and checking it, you're going to know if it gets loose. Uh, next time you clean it, you can put something in there and make sure it didn't back out. If it looks like it's loose, then maybe you want to be a little bit more um, torquing next time. That is a Taurus 1911. I picked this up at a pawn shop for pretty cheap. It was pretty tacky. Somebody, what's called a, um, I forgot what they call the slide. Clear, I don't remember what it was. Naked, something. 
So they left the black in here, but they polished off the black everywhere else. They left the black and gray kind of on top. I guess they thought it was cool. It's a nice little gun. It shoots great, eats ammo. I mean, this gun will shoot when my other higher priced guns will not shoot. So it's really a nice little 1911. I don't like it because it's Series 80. I keep it loaded. It's in one of my head spots in case I got to grab it. And um, that's it. So here's, I'll put a mag in it. Put a round in it. Put it on safe. Replace a round. And this will go back in this little spot until its big debut when it has to do what it was made for. All right, 1911, complete reassemble. Hope that helped. We'll end that there.